the time has come. We finally get to talk about Fortnite today. Uh, I'm dyslexic, so, um, Fortin. We're talking about Fortin today. Now, a lot of this was covered by a guy called Luis Torres, and I'm going to link that video, but it didn't get a lot of attention, uh, and I think it should have. So I'm going to talk about it today. Fortin Amplification are a relatively new brand. They came out in 2008, and in that time, they've developed a somewhat mythical reputation among the gent and heavy metal community. But there's been some things that worry me, ranging from faulty amplifiers to poor customer service, all the way up to plagiarism allegations. So let's look at it today. Fortin are interesting. On the one hand, they're as edgy as an angst-filled 14-year-old boy with amp names like The Evil Pumpkin, Bones, and Natass, which is Satan spelt backwards. Very spooky, guys. While on their Twitter, it's a mixture of deep quotes and bad jokes. White people only like Cinco de Mayo because it has mayo in it. <laughs> Circumcision is popular because Jewish girls won't touch anything that's not at least 15% off. Ooh. That's their professional, official Twitter page. Fortin are one of the most hyped brands I've come across. They've even got their own army. <sighs> Fan bases that call themselves armies are notorious for accepting criticism really well. Hyping up gear has always been the best way to sell to a guitar player. Boomers fetishize 50s and 60s Gibsons because of who played them. And gent kids today lust after whatever periphery played last week. It's the same thing. Gaining hype for products is actually quite easy. Heavy advertising coupled with celebrity endorsement. But maintaining hype can really only be done by limiting the amount of product that hits the market. Black Machine did it early on and you can find them for 20k now. A good modern example would be Horizon Devices. Most of their product line isn't available for purchase. And Fortin do this too. Currently, out of the seven amplifiers that are on their site, you can get... None. It means hype is sustained and it means you can sell products at a higher price for longer. One thing they do keep in stock is pedals. People tend to spend a lot more for simple things if a brand name is attached. Like $225 for a fixed EQ boost. Oh no. I can already hear the Fortin army in the comments. Listen, I'm not saying anything is bad. I'm merely saying that like many overhyped things, the price generally outweighs the value. In 2020, Fortin released a lunchbox amp called the Sigil. Very spooky, guys. And recently, when a customer got his, he was having problems. When he turned it to standby, the standby didn't work. Now before we go any further, I'd like to demonstrate how a standby switch works. And I'm going to do this on a rather aptly fitting Victory amplifier. Because the Fortin Sigil is made in the UK, just like the Victory is, and they have uh, quite a few physical similarities. Now I'm just going to chug on the open strings, and then I'm going to turn the standby on. And you're going to hear what happens. <laughs> I'm still playing, and nothing's coming through the amp. That's how the standby works on just about every amplifier I've ever played. However, that's not how it works on the Sigil. Cute. That's not great, is it? Here's another customer who had the same issue. With the amp in standby mode. Well, this customer wasn't too happy, so he reached out to Fortin privately to resolve the problem. Now, feel free to pause to read all these emails, but I'm just going to touch on the main points.
Fortin claim that there's nothing wrong with the amplifier and that it's just power supply bleed off. They say that this happens to all of the sigils. However, I have seen Facebook comments from sigil owners who have said that this doesn't happen with their amps. Fortin maintained that there is nothing wrong and tell the customer that he can send his amplifier back, but refer him to the returns policy multiple times. Now we're going to be taking a look at this returns policy in just a moment, but in these emails, they do insist that this returns policy does apply to this customer. Now John, the customer, wasn't too happy about this. He posted up the screenshots of these emails on some Facebook groups and sent the amplifier back expecting to lose some money. However, the combined outrage of people on these Facebook groups who saw this happen ultimately ended up getting John a full refund. So that's the end of the story. Except it's not. Let's take a look at Fortin's returns policy. For example, their pre-orders policy. Full payment is required for all pre-orders. No refunds will be issued for pre-order products on any e-commerce platform. Now already this is very uncommon for me, because in the EU, there's a 30-day returns policy written into law. Returns and cancelled orders. Product returns are only accepted within five days of receipt of goods with Fortin issued RMA numbers that is accompanied with the original sales receipt. There will be a 25% restocking fee for all returned goods. See, I can understand a restocking fee on low priced items, but when you're paying, say, eight grand for an amplifier, if you return it, you lose $2,000. What? Restocking fees on pedals, maybe the pedal just doesn't work with your rig. You lose near $60. I can understand that restocking products can add cost, but 25% cost. Now I was thinking that maybe this is to hinder those people who buy amplifiers only to profile them for a camper and then send them back. But 25% affects everyone who's bought any product. And they reference this returns policy to the customer who had a problem with his amplifier. He was going to lose 25% and he was going to lose shipping and everything. That doesn't seem right. John, the customer, received a full refund, including his shipping, because people were talking. But this whole problem, and there is undeniably a problem, was seemed to be swept under the carpet. There's been no official talk of it from Fortin. And there are other people out there with problems. Even according to Fortin themselves, every sigil owner has the same problems. So I wanted to know if this returns policy, which they cited, is applicable to this problem. So I reached out to them and this was their statement. We do have policies in place for our staff to follow and we have been offering customers the option to make the standby engage much quicker. We take care of this under warranty with no charge to them. In a few cases, we have issued full refunds as well, but no one has been charged a restocking fee. So there we have it, at least a silver lining. If you have this amplifier with this problem, you can get your problem resolved at no cost. Now there's a few more things that I'd like to briefly touch on. Fortin's return policy isn't the only interesting policy they have on their site. I'm talking about their privacy policy. Some of it's kind of funny, like section 3 about the accuracy of the information on the site. The material on this site is provided for general information only, and should not be relied upon or used as the sole basis for making decisions without consulting primary, more accurate, more complete or more timely sources of information. You'd think that the guys making the amps would be the primary source of information, but apparently not. But that's just something to laugh at and poke fun at. But there is a policy that does kind of concern me. Like almost every site on the web, they collect data and personal information about you. Your IP address, your name, your email, your address. However, there's a clause that stipulates that they can disclose and release your personal information if they deem that you've broken their terms of service, which is subject to change at any time. So they can essentially dox you if they feel like it, which I'd hope they would never do, but it's weird that that clause is there. Fortin also have some other drama that I'd like to briefly cover because I don't want to get too involved in this because I don't like either side. Now these are just accusations and they come from a forum post that I'm going to link below, where both sides have their say in probably the most unprofessional manner possible. Personal insults aplenty, but I did want to mention that it is a thing. In short, there's a small German amp builder called Larry. He claims that Mike Fortin purchased two amplifiers from him before Fortin amps were established. 
He claims that at the time, he had over 300 emails with Mike talking about technical specifications about the amplifiers. He claims that he's looked in a number of Fortins and the circuitry is almost identical to his. Fortin's AR guy, who seems to have quite the reputation, responds over 28 pages. First with deflection, but then ultimately refutes the points. But neither side have supported tangible evidence to support what they say, which is weird because someone has proof. But I just thought it was worth mentioning because it hasn't been mentioned on YouTube as far as I know. But in conclusion, the Fortin sigil has a problem with its standby. And I think at the very least, this should be disclosed. If you have a Fortin sigil with this problem, you can get it repaired for free. So subscribe, like the video or, or dislike the video. I don't care. And uh, we'll see you next time.